Most local school districts have tallied their vote counts for budgets. Board members' propositions so far all have passed and by huge numbers in several districts. So let's welcome back in East Syracuse Manoa Superintendent Dr. Donna Desiato. Donna, thanks for joining us again. Good evening, Jeff. Great to see you again. So superintendents always would like to see their budgets passed um, and those adopted by the school board. But I think I've talked to several this year that say this year more than ever they want to see it because there's so much uncertainty with possible state cuts. So what was your feeling when you saw those numbers come back um, from the vote? We were just uh, both uh, tremendously appreciative to our community. Uh, we really believe that our community uh, had voted on the fact that they appreciate and value a high quality education and i also think jeff that in particularly this spring uh people got to see another aspect to education and so they actually had uh, the ability to see education through a different lens and i think that that was another very important to us as to how people would view all that we had done really to meet learner needs both in the first two-thirds of the school year and then the last third of the school year when we went to distance learning. We were looking at a little bit of video of in-person voting. That was from last year. Obviously, nobody got to vote in person this year. And maybe a silver lining in all this with the absentee ballots that went out with prepaid um, po return postage on there, the numbers for most districts were through the roof. I think you guys had um, 2,800 votes this year compared to like 700 last year. What do you take away from that? Well, I think the accessibility, uh, the fact that people were able to uh, have the availability of a ballot that what we refer to as an absentee ballot, but a ballot that actually came to their home that they were able to then put in the mail and mail back in. I think that that definitely shows that uh, voters will vote if, they, if we make it more accessible. Um, I also think that uh, it provided that information, again, at a in a convenient way so i think that uh we did see a tremendous and i think most districts saw uh a tremendous increase in the number of voters do you do you think from what we've learned this year we may actually see something um maybe like a hybrid next year hopefully we can vote in person but that we may try to incorporate absentee ballot in there to keep people more uh in in line of voting we've actually all always had both uh, offered. Uh, I think we'll continue to probably see that and an, as an increase. Um, I'd like to think that at some point in time we would think that perhaps voting every other year or every three or four years like we do with elections uh, might be uh, a better way of mm. really thinking about taxpayer dollars because uh, certainly it, it, there is a cost to operating a, a, a vote. Um, clearly we need the taxpayers uh, input uh, I do think that by electing Board of Education members we, that represent our community, that's also taken into consideration. But I think the more that we can offer people options, the more that they will exercise their input. We've got about two more minutes left. So you were part of a Board of Regents meeting uh, today for Region 2, most of the, the districts in our area, for this reopening task force. What did you hear? What did you take away from that as far as what things could look like in the fall? Certainly very impressed with the way that the New York State Education Department went about this. Uh, the, I believe that there were uh, over 300 people involved in the overall uh, regional task force meeting. Now that included, of course, people from the State Education Department and others um, that are providing the support. Uh, they, they focused on nine different areas, uh, teaching and learning, health and safety, social emotional learning. Uh, along with some of the other specifics of such as transportation, special education, budget and finance. Uh, but I think what we what the big takeaway was one, they were listening to the very the varied stakeholders, whether they were educators, parents, students, um, other uh, representatives um, from e ELL communities, bilingual communities. Uh, equity was an important and accessibility. Uh, and I think that we uh, began a conversation that will go on for the next several weeks uh, and into the summer as we plan for what will reopening actually look like. And will we again be thinking about uh, the fact that we may need to be operating a dual system? Uh, that's not really clear yet, Jeff, depending on what happens with the virus and the spread of the virus. 
We're going to welcome you back because I have even more I want to ask you about uh, concerning education as we go forward here, but we're running out of time. But I appreciate you uh, joining us tonight. ESM Superintendent Dr. Donna Desiato, thanks so much. Thank you.